Welcome back to Cruising Us Crew, my name is Lucy and today I am going to be going through how much money I would advise taking on board when you first join a cruise ship. So we're going to go through exactly what you might need to pay for so then you can take that into consideration when getting ready for your first cruise ship. Before we start, please press like and subscribe for more cruise ship content. I just want to say a thank you to everyone who is getting in contact either through the comments down below or via Instagram at Cruising Us Crew and letting me know what kind of videos they want to see. It really helps me out, so if you have something that you would like me to make a video on, please let me know. But let's get into this video. So the first thing is, you want to get currency out before you go anywhere. So hopefully you are going to have a little bit of notice. I mean, the shortest amount of notice I have had is a week. But that's not really normal. You'll probably have at least a month. So you're going to have a month of knowing where you are joining your ship and what ship you are going on. But you want to research what currency the ship uses that you are joining. And also, where are you joining? Are you joining in the US? Are you joining in the United Arab Emirates? Are you joining in Australia? If so, I would recommend getting a little bit of cash out in that currency. I always like to have a little bit of cash. You never know. It's better to have it and not need it than to not have it and need it. When you are flying to your ship, I would always take enough money to pay for a hotel. Various reasons. Depending on what company you work for, they may pay for your hotel and your flights, or they might say that they will reimburse you once you are on board. Now, even if they say that they are going to pay for everything, and I have had a few instances where I have had to fork out for things. For my first ship, I flew to Australia. I landed in Australia, let's say, Sunday morning, at 2 a.m. So it really it's still like the middle of the night. But the company hadn't booked me a hotel until Sunday evening and I landed there Sunday morning at 2 a.m. So I was like, well, it's 2 a.m. I'm not just gonna wander the streets until tonight when my hotel's booked. That was a shock but that I had to pay for a hotel because as far as I was concerned, they paid for it. And then it's also happened to me where the company have said that they will pay for the hotel, but it just so happened that I've got there and they've booked the hotel for me, but they haven't paid for it. So I have to pay for it and then they will reimburse me, which is absolutely fine if you have the money. Obviously, if the company tells them that they're gonna pay for it, then some people don't have the money with them. So I would just always make sure that you have enough money to pay for your hotel room because you just never know, things happen. Obviously, you wanna take enough money for food when you travel. Think about how long it's gonna take you to get to the destination. Obviously, if you're going from London to Southampton or even London to Spain, it's fine. If you're going from London to Sydney, you really need to think about money for food. I'm not going to recommend how much to take, obviously it depends on how much you eat and what you like to eat, whether you are happy to go for the cheap stuff or whether you want to be a little bit more bougie. So you can suss that out for yourself, but just think about food. Think about the fact that you are going to have to eat. You're going to need to get to the ship. So you've stayed over in your hotel or you've just landed from the airport. You need to either get from the airport or the hotel to the ship. So you're going to need a taxi or you're need to going to get a train. Wherever you are joining your ship, maybe research taxi services, research the trains, like figure out how you're going to get from the hotel or the airport to the ship and how much it is going to cost. But usually I normally take about 30 pounds, $30 with me, I leave for transport to get to the ship. A lot of the time I don't use that, a lot of the time it's definitely not that expensive, but I would rather have enough than not enough. Okay, so we're at the ship now. You definitely want to take some cash on board with you. What I would say, before you go and join your ship, you want to research the ship. Maybe it's Royal Caribbean and they use American dollars on board. Maybe it's P&O UK and they use pounds on board. You need to research what currency the ship uses on board. And then I would go to the money shop or any exchange shop and get some dollars or some pounds or whatever you need out for that ship. The reason being, there are certain things on board that you can only use cash for. So if you want to buy a calling card when you're on board, you have to use a note, you have to use cash. So when you get on board, you are going to be given a Laminex which is basically your ship ID. Obviously this one's bare, but it will have your like photo on it and whatever. You can connect your card to it, or you can do pay as you go. And basically your Laminex is how you pay for things on board. The crew office can sometimes have trouble connecting your card to the Laminex. And if that is an issue, then you are gonna want to have cash 
so that you can do pay as you go so that you can give them I don't know 20 pounds cash they put that on your laminate and then you are able to buy Wi-Fi or you're able to buy a beer in the crew bar because you are going to meet all these new people They are going to invite you to crew bar for a drink So you're going to want to buy a drink definitely take some cash and every cruise ship is different with their prices Crew bars are generally always cheap Wi-Fi differs Massively on prices calling cards. It's usually like I think ten dollars for an hour is what I used to pay on Royal Caribbean Which is really good. You don't need a calling card You know if you're from the UK and your ships in Spain, but like when I was in Australia, it was definitely cheaper to call my family using a calling card than using my mobile. I would say take about 50 pounds or dollars with you in that currency as like a minimum. It's just a safety net. Also, it's a lot cheaper to exchange money off the ship. Obviously it depends, but usually the exchange rate isn't like great on board. So I tend to kind of exchange as much money at home it was cheaper to just do it at home and take it with me than to exchange my pounds when I was on board but just going back to the laminex thing when I said about you know you might have problems connecting your cards so you need cash to do pay as you go I would actually recommend doing pay as you go it's a lot easier to keep track of what you are spending I talk more in depth about this in my other video which I will link down below but yes I would definitely recommend doing pay as you go if you want to save money if you're not bothered about how much you spend then just connect your card but if I go on a cruise ship now I definitely do pay as you go rather than connecting my debit card to the laminex and last but not least get a Revolut card so this is a prepaid debit card you have an app on your phone where you can load money onto it I, I mean get a Revolut or get Monzo or whatever there's loads of them because it just ensures that you can keep tabs on what you are spending and also I've had this where on my first contract I just took my debit card went out into Sydney put it in the cash machine to get some money out and the machine ate my card and trust me it is near impossible to get a new debit card sent to you when you're on a moving ship that's going from place to place to place so at least if you have a Revolut card you put it in an ATM and it eats it it's fine because you can just use the app take the money that was on the prepaid debit card and put it on your debit card and move on with your life and you still have your debit card it's a lot better that the ATM eats this than eats your actual debit card so this is a security blanket and also there's less or no charges when you withdraw money in a foreign country so I mean why not just get it this isn't an ad by the way this is just like I use this if I go abroad if I go on a ship wherever I go I take my Revolut card it's really good so get one of these but thank you so much for watching guys I really hope this video has answered your questions if you have any more questions about how much money to take on board money questions then leave them in the comments down below or you can get in touch with me over on Instagram at cruising us crew but please press the subscribe button for more cruise ship content and I will see you in the next video